I thank you very much about your kind of introduction and a thanks for organizing committee to invite me here. And I would like to talk about uh, the uh, implantation and potential and uh, the uterine disability. And uh, we, I have uh, several talks. The first is embryo assessment selection by time lapse uh, evaluation using the EVA system can uh, help transfer at the cleavage stage. I know that Dr. Tan has the talk about uh, uh, timeless, can predict uh, the blastocyst formation, also talk about can increase the uh, predict the implantation. But these papers, I think, uh, is actually applied uh, in the transfer at the early stage of embryo and to compare with the blastocyst transfer without timeless. So they find can achieve the similar results. And the second talk is about uh, the euploidy blastocyst formation and the blastocyst implantation rate is higher for uh, EVA high embryo score compared to low score. And so these papers I think is further uh, talk about uh, the timeless uh, selection can predict the euploidy uh, chromosome status of the blastocyst. And, uh, Further, the talk is about the, the ongoing pregnancy rate in vitrified blastocyst is not influenced by the extent of the zona pellucida taxation of the sowing, but mainly by blastocyst re-expansion. Uh, this table, I think, is talk about the, um, the size of the association will not affect the implantation and ongoing pregnancy. The fourth talk is about reduction of multiple pregnancies in advanced maternal age population after implantation of an elective single embryo transfer policy coupled with the enhanced embryo selection. And it's talk about using the PGS to select a embryo will uh, increase the implantation rate and uh, compare without the PGS period is pre intervention study and post-intervention study means uh, after application of the PGS. The last talk will talk about the effect of transfer uh, one or two blastocysts in older women 40 to 42 years old on pregnancy and clinical pregnancy and libraries. I think this talk is about can we just transfer one embryo in this age of group 40 to 42 years old and uh, this talk is talk about timeless. The first talk uh, uh, used the timeless to, uh, to select the embryo uh, transfer in the early cleavage stage compared to traditional uh, blastocyst transfer. Uh, we know blastocyst transfer allow more precise embryo selection, permitting elective single embryo transfer and minimizing multiple pregnancy However, it may lead to alter fetal development, possibly related to epigenetic change. The time-lapse system can predict blastocyst formation, and so maybe we can just transfer the early cleavage embryo uh, on day three and can achieve the similar results uh, compared to the blastocyst transfer. So results showing to the patient less than 30 seven years old, there was no significant difference in clinical pregnancy rate and implantation rate between the um, EVA group and the, between the blastocyst group. You can see the implantation rate and pregnancy rate was similar. In the age group, uh, more than 37 years old also, have the similar results, and we can see the clinical pregnancy rate in the EVA group is comparable to the blastocyst transfer group, and also the implantation rate. Um, logistic regression analysis uh, transfer they did not predict outcomes, suggest that these three embryos selecting using the EVA system together with conventional morphology had the implantation potential similar to the blastocyst transfer. 
Uh, so the conclusion is day three transfer using the EVA system combined with conventional morphology to select embryos result in equivalent implantation rate and clinical pregnancy rate to Brussels cyst transfer. The results were consistent in both younger group and older group. And uh, the clinical implications means using the EVA system to improve embryo selection can provide a viable option for program with limited resources for performing Brussels cyst culture. And also for patients with higher risk of cancer, uh, cycle cancer due to the fail to culture to Brussels cyst, using the EVA system can result in better outcome and improve implantation for day three ET will encourage single embryo transfer practice and reduce potential of multiple pregnancy risk. The second talk is about the uh, UPRO did Brussels cyst formation and Brussels cyst implantation rate is higher for EVA high score embryos compared to the low and low score embryos in the PGS group and in the non-PGS group about the implantation rate. Uh, timeless systems parameters has been correlated uh, to any product risk and uh, it can maybe it can predict any product risk but uh, the actually the results is quite controversial in the past uh, uh, literature. Uh, can to improve IVF outcome, the EVA system is an automatic timeless system and embryo uh, classifications can reduce the need uh, to measure the timeless parameters uh, manually. Unlike the other uh, timeless system, you have to uh, calculate by yourself. And uh, the purpose of this study is to, is to evaluate the correlation of EVA test with chromosome status of Brussels cyst and implantation rate. This is including uh, PGS patients and non-PGS patients. And uh, for PGS patients, we do the Brussels cyst biopsy. And uh, for non-PGS patients, we just use the traditional uh, morphological gradient. The timeless results uh, or not, uh, uh, or blinded to the embryologist. The embryologist do not know the timeless results, then further analyze the data. The results showed uh, EVA high school embryos has significant higher euploidy rates of the Brussels cyst than EVA uh, low school system. The EVA high school embryos has significant higher day five implantation rate compared to the low school embryos. The conclusion is a positive correlation was observed between EVA test results. High school have higher instance of euprodid embryos and higher implantation. So the clinical implications include EVA tests may reflect the chromosome integrity of human embryos and add valuable information to improve embryo selection and facilitate the trend of the ESET. The positive correlation between the EVA test results and the Uproidy Brussels cyst formation may also provide potential decision support for patients considering PGS uh, biopsy because the PGS is very labor intensive and also cost a lot of money and sometimes you should have consider to some damage to the embryos during the back handle of the embryos. So the PGS maybe have the, uh, another choice for the patients who want to do the P PGS and uh, they can consider using just only the timeless system to select the embryos. The other talk about uh, the uh, uterine receptability. receptability. The ongoing pregnancy rate, uh, we now, uh, is quite common in our general practice uh, to do the assisted hatching uh, after sowing of the blastocyst. 
because we know after sewing, we have the quite a big space between the cells and rona pesticida. It's quite easy to do the laser assimilation to try to improve the implantation rate. The freeze source process sometimes will result in hardening of the rona pesticida and can may impair the implantation and hatching process. Some randomized studies have shown laser assist hatching may improve implantation rate for the sewing blast assist. But some concerns has been raised about the size of the assist hatching, the length, because a small or moderate size of a hole of the assist hatching may trap the blast assist in a typical figure of eight shape. A wider dissection of the zona may overcome this phenomenon, make the embryo easier to go out. The purpose of this study is to evaluate the effect of extent of the laser assist hatching on the zona pellucida and the size kept, uh, divided into two groups. The first group is less than 25% uh, of the uh, circumference and the second group is 25 to 50% of circumference on ongoing pregnancy rate in frozen embryo uh, blastocyst transfer. This is a retrospective uh, study and uh, the single uh, blastocyst transfer after sewing, the, they evaluated the pre-freezing conditions uh, and the post-freezing conditions for sewing conditions about the blastocyst expansion in the cell mass and the trophoblast uh, grading. And uh, after sewing, they do the uh, assimilation with the different kinds uh, size of the uh, hole on the zona pellucida. And the uh, blastocysts were evaluated immediately uh, before embryo transfer. The results showing the um, pre-freeze and the post-sewing blastocyst uh, expansion can predict the ongoing pregnancy rate. And also the pre-freeze inner cell mass can, is related to the ongoing pregnancy rate, the bigger inner cell mass have the uh, higher ongoing pregnancy rate. The trophoblast grading is not uh, predicted of ongoing pregnancy rate. I think uh, uh, Dr. Ten, the first talk, uh, it talked about uh, the actually trophoblast uh, cell number also predictive with the pregnancy rate. And also, uh, in several years of uh, papers, also mentioned about the importance of the trophoblast uh, trophectoderm. But uh, I think both of inner cell mass and trophoblast is important uh, for the embryos. Especially, I think inner cell mass size is also very important. Um, however, no difference of ongoing pregnancy was observed between the two groups of the size of the uh, assisted hatching. So hatching uh, process uh, not uh, affected by the assisted hatching size in these studies. So the conclusion is the extent of zona pellucida uh, laser dissection uh, after sawing has no influence on the ongoing pregnancy rate for the frozen blastocyst transfer. And the pre-freeze and post-sewing blastocyst expansion and pre-freeze inner cell mass grading are the most significant predictors on ongoing pregnancy. So the clinical implications is the blastocyst with higher pre-freeze grading of blastocyst expansion and inner cell mass should be given priority when sewing. So we will choose the best embryos for sewing with the expansion blastocyst with large inner cell mass first. And the blastocyst re-expansion after sewing should be the most predictor uh, to the ongoing pregnancy rate. 
And uh, the first talk is about a reduction of multiple brain cleanse, uh, rate in the advanced maternal age uh, after implantation with the uh, PGS for embryo selection. So multiple pregnancy are increased risk of preterm birth and potential perinatal uh, deaths. And uh, occurred many in older patients, especially when we want to increase the pregnancy rate, we transfer more embryos on the uh, older woman, advanced maternal age. And uh, a single embryo transfer policy usually recommended in good prognosis patients but no general consensus has been reached for single embryo transfer for the advanced maternal age, such as more than uh, 35 years old. Uh, the purpose of this study is to determine whether elective single embryo transfer coupled with increased application of Brussels cis culture and PGS is efficient and effective and safe in the, this age of uh, at advanced maternal age. This study is, uh, is select, uh, uh, try to do the embry single embryo transfer for the advanced maternal age. And the a four years uh, study period, uh, the first uh, period is without PTS, so it's the pre-intervention period. And compared in recent uh, uh, one or two years with the PGS uh, is a post-intervention period. And uh, in the post-intervention period, all couples with good quality embryos and uh, have less than two previous implantation failures were offered with elective embryo transfer. And embryo transfer was enhanced by the PGS with trophectoderm biopsy and the uh, CCS. And ESET was also applied on the prior preservation uh, cycles. They found that the efficiency was significantly higher during the, uh, after the PGS, the post-intervention period, has been shown to uh, the per embryo transfer to reach a live birth is higher in the post-PGS period, the post-intervention period, compared to the pre-intervention period. Also, we can see the embryo transfer number was decreased in the post-intervention period, and also the multiple pregnancy rates was decreased compared with the pre-intervention uh, period. And they have a similar cumulative clinical pregnancy rate per outside retrievers uh, between the prevention period and the post-intervention period. The cumulative, I think is the first, uh, it's a very important study to so show the cumulative pregnancy rate is similar with PGS and without PGS. And this uh, figure show the, sorry, the Cumulative pregnancy rate are uh, in the pre-intervention period and post-intervention -inter period is no difference. And uh, however, the multiple pregnancy rate significantly reduced after applied with the PGS and the single embryo transfer. So the, the efficacy was not to change here uh, after PGS. Uh, uh, is uh, defined by the uh, delivery the per oocyte retrieval cycle is not the decrease. The conclusion mean is application of the single embryo transfer policy combined with the uh, PGS uh, can be used in advanced maternal age to reduce uh, the multiple pregnancy rates and to increase the efficiency in per transfer of pregnancy uh, while still maintaining the cumulative pregnancy rate uh, per oocyte or retrieval. The clinical implication in the advanced maternal age population 
uh, enhanced embryo selection procedures with PTS allows a reduction in number of embryo transferred with increased efficiency per transfer of pregnancy rate and safety uh, to reduce the multiple pregnancy and without affect the uh, cumulative pregnancy rate, the total effic efficacy was not changed. Uh, the next, uh, last talk is about uh, uh, can we just transfer one embryo for the older woman with age 40 to 42 years old to reduce the multiple pregnancy? In women less than 36 years old, transfer two Brussels sisters will increase the multiple pregnancy rate without necessarily increasing the clinical pregnancy rate and life birth rate. A few studies have been demonstrated that similar findings in women with 36 to 39 years old uh, transfer one embryo can achieve the similar results compared with uh, two embryo transfer. However, the age above the 40 transfer one embryo has not been investigated. So this, this study is uh, try to uh, investigate whether transfer to Brussels sister in women older than 40 years old increase the pregnancy rate or live birth or multiple pregnancy compared with the single embryo transfer. This is a retrospective studies uh, for the woman age 40 to 46 years old and uh, this, uh, they have the 33, uh, 38 single embryo transfer patients and the 88 double embryo transfer uh, patients in the age group between the 40 to 42 years old. The results show the pregnancy rate and the clinical pregnancy rate and the live birth rate were comparable regarding list of the number of embryo transfer. For one embryo transfer, the live birth rate is 21%. For two embryo transfer, the live birth rate was similar. It's about 40%, 19%. And uh, however, the multiple pregnancy rate was significantly different. In this study, there's no multiple pregnancy rate for single embryo transfer, but the two embryo transfer result in the 24% multiple pregnancy rate. Uh, the conclusions, uh, transferring of two processes in women aged 40 to 42 years old does not improve clinical pregnancy outcome and only increase the rate of the multiple births when compared to the single embryo transfer. The clinical implications is that Given the pregnancy rate do have room to increase in older women, women transfer three or more brassosis in this age group could improve clinical results, but a concurrent increase in multiple pregnancy rate is likely. So uh, transfer three embryos, I think from these studies in this age group, 40 to 42 years old, is not justified. According to their stu study results, but uh, in the general practice, I think uh, transfer to Brussels is, is quite common in this age of group. Uh, because, uh, for my opinion, uh, the unreported rate is quite high in this age of group. Transfer one embryo and two embryo can achieve the similar results is quite questionable. But uh, the papers say the similar results. So that's why maybe transfer two or one of embryos is enough for the 40 to 42 years old, but three is too, too much. Thanks for your attention.